What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest. So we've got big NEO earnings coming out tomorrow morning and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these videos. So to help you understand, okay, what to expect and how the price action could react after the earnings come out. We've only got four more months left for 2023 to be over. It's literally peak time. It's September, October, November, December. It's festivals, holidays, lots of spending, lots of buying and volumes of course increase uh, for trading volumes also increase and of course fourth quarter of any year is seasonality wise the best quarter for the stock market as well so we are literally going into uh, the best time of the year for both the markets and just in general right so hope you guys enjoy this video find it helpful if you do make sure that you drop a like don't forget to subscribe to the channel link to our discord and patreon is going to be down below there is a 16 percent annual discount available till the end of this month so you will get access to all the member benefits all the member only private videos and of course alerts and everything with the link down below and there is a 16% annual discount that does expire in two more days. And I also want to point out the labor for uh, coupon code is still valid, the Labor Day sale, and you get access to the fundamental technical analysis, options courses, the whole bundle, everything 50 to 60% off, and the coupon code is going to be labor for. Now, going over to NEO. So earnings are going to be reported second quarter 2023. And uh, of course, there are many questions that we need to ask from the management. We are still tra trailing behind the overall yearly target of 250,000 vehicle deliveries. Um, and that's going to be the main question. And of course, Tesla's price cuts are going to be the main question. Uh, China's economy are going to be some of the other questions that need to be answered as well, because Evergrande and Country Garden, there's a lot of developers that are failing and defaulting in China and how that's going to affect the economy and how that's going to affect Neo more specifically as well. So there's a lot of a lot of questions that we need to uh, that we need answers for. But for the three months ending in April, Wall Street is expecting Neo to report uh, per share loss of 41 cents. I believe this is going to be for the three months ending in June. So January, February, March, April, May, June. Right. So that's uh, really going to be the quarter that they are expecting. I don't know why it says ending in April. Uh, loss of 41 cents uh, on revenues of 1.27 billion dollars. So if you come over to Neo, uh, this right here again is going to be this earnings earnings expectations. A little bit of a loss of 41 cents per share, 1.26, 1.27 billion dollars of revenue that compares to a sh per share loss of 24 cents last year and revenue 1.48 billion. So we are going to see declines on a year over year basis, and for the full year. Ending in December, the loss is expected to be about a dollar per share, rising 21% year on year, while full year revenue expected at 11.62 billion, uh, rising 62% year over year. So even though revenues are increasing, profitability is getting worse for the company. That's something that we have discussed in our previous videos. And as noted, NEO has begun ramping up its deliveries in July, where it delivered 20,400 vehicles. It's a pretty substantial number and was up 91% on a year-over-year -year basis. But even if they do 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 for the next four years, September, October, November, November December, and including August, um, then that would only put us at 177,000 vehicles for the year, still far below the 250,000 target that NEO gave us earlier in the year. So those are some of the concerns, right? So NEO's ramp up is not as uh, as ex is not going as expected according to strategy. So those are going to be some questions. And of course, if they do end up beating expectations, if coming better than expectations, which I, I somewhat doubt that they will, um, then, then it's possible the stock maybe starts to go back higher considering that it is really oversold. RSI and MACD, again, trading at near oversold levels and the price itself is at a very strong support area, right? As an area of demand at close to $10 and 50 cents. So inside this green rectangle, very, very nice area of support and demand for NEO at close to 1050. But any hiccups, any problems with the guidance, any problems with the changing of targets, any problems with Tesla's price cuts and competitive pressures, any problems with China's economy, any problems with basic beating expectations for revenue and EPS. And uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if NEO does break down below 1050 uh, once again, and then potentially makes its way down to 940s, 940s, 950s. That's right there is going to be that next support level to watch for NEO. Now, a lot of these are binary events, right? So I don't like to trade going into these events, right? Markets are very much uh, traded on a more reactionary basis as opposed to being proactive. If you are going to be proactive, it's going to be more about gambling than anything else. Trade the markets that you're in, not the markets that you want to be in, and also uh, focus on where you can get the best risk reward opportunities, right? So NEO from a long-term perspective, I think there's still potential, there's still value. However, 
it needs to be shown. It needs Neo needs to start showing its value, and and the way they do that is by proper execution and eventually turning it towards profitability. If we don't see profitability in the next couple of years, as unfortunate as it's going to be, Neo, in, in my opinion at least, is not going to be potentially investable long term if they don't start focusing on better margins, better cash flow, better profitability, more efficient business. At the end of the day, that's what survives, right? Long term, that's what survives. So support level is going to stay at 1049, 1050. Like I said, all the way down to 940s and resistance up to as much as $13 per share. We are oversold. We have been pushing higher quite a bit from seven bucks. We rallied all the way up to 16, so 133% rally. But then, of course, got rejected at this lower high, which is coming in from a couple of years ago. That's the resistance, and we sold right back down. So. Tomorrow it should be quite interesting for Neo and what the, what those numbers end up looking like. Going over to Tesla and Tesla here on the day also getting a little bit of that rejection at around 238 to 40. So this right here is going to be that area of resistance for Tesla where we are getting rejected at the moment. Uh, and of course, uh, another resistance all the way up to as much as this lower high, very similar to pattern from NEO, where this right here is also coming in from a couple of years ago, where Tesla pretty much got rejected in 2021, 2022, uh, and now once again in 2023. We've of course rallied quite a bit from low $100 all the way to over 300. That's almost a 200% gain, but we have once again seen a very similar pattern of a pullback for Tesla as well. And that's really how patterns basically move, right? So we move higher. We get sold off, we move higher, we get sold off. And this is the uptrending channel within which Tesla is once again trading at. So we are seeing a lot of higher highs and higher lows for Tesla. And right now it is at a very strong confluence of support from both the horizontal support. So this previous resistance acting as a new support that's inside this green rectangle right here. Uh, and also the higher low that I just pointed out for Tesla. So a lot of it obviously depends on the overall macros, how the Nasdaq ends up performing and Tesla more specifically, if it gets a breakout above 240s, 245, uh, then it's possible that it makes its way over back up to over 290s and possibly even $300 per share. But if we continue to get rejected and there is a head and shoulders forming on the Nasdaq, so if we do get a breakdown below those levels, then it's possible that Tesla once again comes down to low 200s, possibly even sub 200. And that's the thing, right? I mean, a lot of guys, a lot, a lot of people think that coming to these videos, looking at technical analysis, you will have 100% certainty where the stock price is going, right? You can make predictions. That's not how it works, right? You can never make predictions. You can never have 100% guarantees or certainty as to where the price is going to go, right? If anybody, anybody that you're watching, right? I don't care who it is. If they're telling you exactly where the price is going to go, they're either lying to you or they're lying to, your, to themselves, right? Because nobody knows, nobody knows. And I'm, I'm straight up telling you, honestly, like I don't know where the price is going to go, right? All we can understand is where's the support, where's the resistance, where it makes most sense to be a buyer, where it makes most sense to be a seller, what's the fair value, what's the intrinsic values, and then analyze risk and reward. And right now for Tesla, from a swing trading perspective, there is certainly a very nice risk reward setup where you are starting to see a little of that momentum back up. MACD is crossing over that signal line. So you can see that first sign of a potential buy signal. RSI is reversing back up. It's trading at a very nice confluence of support. And if you do get a breakout of up 240s, then yes, it has potential to carry itself up further to 290s, 280s at those levels. And support level, like I said, is going to be inside that green rectangle. Talking about SoFi here and SoFi right now consolidating sideways. Now, SoFi scares me a little bit because it is forming a bit of, of a bear flag because it has been trading sideways for the longest time for several days now, almost a couple of weeks, where it's just trading in that range. So this right here is the consolidation for SoFi. You can see that right there. Uh, and it's just, you know, trading sideways after selling off quite a bit after the earnings. So if it does end up breaking down below 795 or close to $8, so this right here is going to be a very important support at 790s. If it ends up breaking down below this, well, then guess what? It's possible that we do make our way lower uh, to, to maybe down as low as 650s uh, or low 7s, right? Low 7s, 650s are going to be some support levels to watch for SoFi next in case we get a breakdown below this. Resistance is going to stay put at 864, 865, all the way up to $10 per share. And finally, we come over to Palantir. Palantir also in very much of a potential head and shoulders, left shoulder, head and a right shoulder. Resistance is going to stay put at 1685, closer to $17 with a very nice neckline and a support sitting at 1375, close to $14. So this right here, very, very important level 
to watch for for Palantir. And of course, if we do get a breakdown below this, the next support is going to be 1032 for Palantir. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and a complete update on the markets. Don't forget, we have a lot of discounts right now, 50, 60% off on the individual courses, coupon code LIBER4. And of course, the Discord and the Patreon is going to be 16% off with the link down below on an annual basis. You can join us for the next two days before that it expires, after that it expires. So as always, happy investing. Neo earnings tomorrow morning, bright and early. So that's going to be very important. Happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.